Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So welcome back to this multi-part tutorial series where I'm showing you how to build a real-world crowd sale that can be used to raise funds and, you know, a real ICO on the Ethereum mainnet. In the last video, we created a, you know, a capped crowd sale that handles, you know, investor minimum contributions and maximum contributions. So check out that previous video if you haven't already, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to see the next video in the playlist whenever it comes out. This episode is presented by QuickNode, the fastest and easiest way to run your own Ethereum node. QuickNode lets you run a personal cloud-based Ethereum node in a flash without having to download any blockchain data or keep it in sync. Sign up at quicknode.io today to start running your own Ethereum node in no time. In this video, we're going to turn this crowd sale into a timed crowd sale. Essentially, it's going to have a start time and an end time, and you know we won't be able to contribute to the crowd sale until the start time is passed and we won't be able to contribute any longer once it's finished so uh, let's go ahead and do that i'm going to uh, show you the timed crowd sale contract go ahead and kill this here so the timed crowd sale is a crowd sale which you know we've imported here already and basically it's going to have an opening time and a closing time so Basically, it's got you know some new constructor arguments for the opening time and the closing time, um, and you know whenever this constructor runs, it'll make sure that it's you know that it's in the future, and that you know the closing time is after the opening time. You know, some basic validations, and it'll assign it to uh, these you know state variables here. Um, so it'll have some other helpers for us, like to see if it's closed, basically is the current time on the blockchain uh, in the future, you know, or, or, or sorry, greater than the closing time. Um, and also, whenever we, uh, investors are purchasing tokens, we want to check that we're in, you know, uh, the, the, the crowd sales open. So this is a function modifier, you know, only while open. Um, whenever the closing uh, opening time is greater than or equal to, you know, the current time of the blockchain, the current block timestamp, and is less than the closing time. And that's the function modifier that's getting called here whenever we pre-validate the token purchase. So let's go ahead and implement this. We can go to uh, the DAP token crowd sale, and we'll just uh, import the timed crowd sale. So it'll also be a validation. So I'll import that like this. And here we'll just say uh, timed crowd sale. All right. And this is going to require, require some new constructor arguments. Um, this will be the, uh, say, opening time and the closing time. And we'll pass those in here. And now these opening and closing times are going to be um, unsigned integers. And they're basically going to be, you know, like Unix time, like epic time. So basically number of seconds since um, basically I think it's the date in 1969. I can't remember for sure. Uh, but it's a number of seconds since a specific date that's been several years ago. And that's how we determine the current time. It's going to be just uh, a, a, an unsigned integer value. So no decimal places, just a big number. Um, not a JavaScript book number, just a long integer with several uh, digits. So that's the amount of time that we're going to use. And I'll show you how that gets converted uh, with the helper and the test. So I'll save this. And yeah, we'll go ahead and write some tests. So let's go back to our crowd sale. Um, Test dap token crowd sale dot test dot js and let's write a test for the timed crowd sale. So here what we want to do is um, let's say after capped crowd sale, let's say describe timed crowd sale. Let's say uh, function all right let's say it is open sync function and we'll just we're just going to test to make sure that the crowd sale is open so we'll say const is closed 
equals await this dot crowd cell uh, is or sorry has closed. Right, that's the uh, function we get from timed crowd sale uh, has closed, right? And uh, we want to say is closed should be false. All right. So now we can go to our crowd sale and we can pass in some values here. Let's go ahead and say, um, let's just copy these. Big time, closing time. Let's paste these here. Say this. And we're going to set these equal to some values here in a second. And we'll just copy these. Oops. Paste them here. All right, so we'll paste those values in. All right, now we need to set the opening time and the closing time. So how do we do that? All right, so Open Zeppelin has some nice helpers that we can use. Um, if you go into their test directory and we see uh, helpers, I believe it's uh, little increase time. Yeah, so it's got some nice helpers that we can use basically to uh, create some durations that will return, uh, you know, seconds for us or, or like the actual timestamp we want. We can you know, see, get a 60 seconds. Uh, we can Basically, I'll show you how this works. We can get a minutes, hours, days. We, we can just get this value the way we want to. And we can, you know, increase the time and things like that. So I'm going to create this new file inside my project. I'll say, um, let's see here. Let's go to our helpers directory. Test, helpers. So we had this ether helper that we created before. Let's create a new one. We'll say, uh, new file and increase time. Yes. I'm just going to paste in some of this code that we get straight from Open Zeppelin. So, this is what we want to look at. This is going to give some helpers to get seconds, minutes, hours, days, uh, whenever we want to create a new duration. And it's also going to give us a way to increase the time um, in Ganache uh, whenever we want to actually simulate a time in the future or the past for the blockchain whenever we run the tests. So we see this file also depends on latest time, which we'll also create. Say latest time. And I'll go ahead and paste that in as well. I'll save this. So basically, this is just saying um, get block latest with Web3 and get the timestamp. And that will return the latest time for the blockchain. So here, um, we'll use both of these uh, whenever we're writing tests for the time to crowd sale. So inside our test, I'm going to uh, import some of these newly created helpers this. So we're going to get increased time uh, to and duration from these helpers. And we're also going to get the latest time for the blockchain from this latest time. Alrighty. So let's say the opening time. Let's calculate this. So we'll say latest time, which we got from our helper, which is going to give us now in uh, you know this Unix timestamp. And we'll add duration weeks one so we'll just say this crowd sale is going to open one week from now right and let's say closing time is equal to this dot opening time and then we'll uh, add duration weeks one so this um, crowd sale scenario will be a week-long crowd sale. I know it's pretty small for a real crowd sale, but this will work for our test. And uh, yeah, it's going to start a week from now, and it's going to end two weeks from now. We can pass these arguments into our crowd sale. Now, let's just see if our contract compiles. And then we're going to run this test. 
And when we do run the test, I expect it to fail, which you'll see why in a minute. All right, compiled. So let's run the tests. I'll let you see if you can guess why it's going to fail. All right, so we've got a couple different failures here. Let's see what the issue is. So the issue, if you can look at our tests, they're all failing. Let's see what's failing. Um, it's not accepting payments. You know, the investor can't contribute. Um, basically, any time that an investor is trying to contribute tokens is failing. So why is that the case? Well, let's look at this timed crowd sale. Um, whenever we pre-validate the purchase, we want to say it's only op only while the crowd sale is open. And we can see the opening time um, must be greater than you know this time. Oh, sorry, backwards. The timestamp must be greater than the opening time. And currently in our test, it's not. You know, we said the opening time is going to be a week from now. So basically, an investor is trying to contribute to a crowd sale that's not open yet. So how do we do that? How do we create a test scenario? Or we can actually, you know, have a test within the time range. Well, we could try to say the opening time is like a week ago. But the problem with that is our crowd sale is going to fail because well, it's going to fail when we deploy it. Because uh, it's got to say the opening time is greater than, you know, the current time. So we could do that. Or um, or what we could do is actually advance time to this time window, so greater than one week. Either way, we have to move the time on the blockchain, whatever we decide to do. But I'm going to um, just increase the time. So let's do that. Say advance time to crowd sell start. All right, say this and say, oh, wait, increase time to, uh, I'll say this dot opening time. And I'll say plus uh, one, just, just one second. That's fine. It just has to be after the opening time. Any amount will do. Well, not any amount. It can't be greater than the closing time, but we'll just make it the, the minimum amount possible, which would be one here. Let's try to run this test. All right, it passes. All right, and that's it. That's how easy it is to create a timed crowd sale um, with this smart contract. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to see the next video in the playlist whenever it comes out. And until then, thanks for watching DAP University.